new field, which is combining the principles and approaches of systems biology with network science to try to understand the causes of human disease. Work medicine represents the marriage of network science and systems biology applied to human biology and human disease. So what is network medicine? Is it network science? Is it systems biology? So let's ask the experts, what is network medicine field? Network medicine is the, the new field which is combining the principles and approaches of systems biology with network science to try to understand the causes of human disease. It also employs the approaches of systems pharmacology to try to develop new treatment approaches and preventative strategies. Network medicine represents the marriage of network science and systems biology applied to human biology and human disease. It really reflects the fact that human phenotypes and pathophenotypes or disease phenotypes are driven by complex interactions among a variety of molecular mediators. These complex interactions generate or are responsible for certain pathways that facilitate the expression of the phenotype or pathophenotype? That's a very interesting question. I think network medicine and the rise of network medicine really captures our growing understanding that from looking at biological systems at the level of a single cell to complex populations, looking at innate diseases that arise within the cell to epidemics that strike populations. Disease processes aren't driven by single elements or single entities, but they're driven by complex interacting systems. And that really, if we want to understand how to control disease, how to treat disease, we have to understand those interactions. Network medicine is inherently a holistic approach. It's trying to look at the whole complex system at once rather than trying to find the single magic molecular defect or the, the single magic treatment bullet that was uh, really the, the, the principle behind so many reductionist approaches you know, to disease. Yes, there are many different ways to create networks that underlie human biology and disease. One can look at networks uh, of protein, protein interactions, one can look at networks of expressed genes following changes in expression of messenger RNA. Uh, whether one looks at one or the other of these kinds of networks, there are biological variants in sequence that exist among many of the molecular mediators of the network. Well, if, even if you think about the simplest processes that operate in a cell, those processes are driven by the interactions of many, many different elements. And what we're seeing increasingly is when we start to look at disease and models of disease, that the network that's constructed in one state and the network that's constructed in another state are subtly different. And it's those differences that really help us inf uh, inform us as to what processes are driving healthy cells and disease cells or cells which are sensitive to therapy and resistant to therapy. So um, the rise of network medicine has really been driven by our understanding that biological systems are complex and that if unless we embrace that complexity, we're not going to make further progress or further substantial progress in medical research. We're not really talking about a single kind of network in network medicine. Certainly we can think about the cellular molecular interactome where we're trying to understand the interactions between uh, proteins where the proteins would be uh, the, the nodes and their interactions physically would be the edges. But there are a range of other networks that are encompassed within this network medicine umbrella. Yes, there are many different ways to create networks that underlie human biology and disease. One can look at networks uh, of protein, protein interactions. One can look at networks of expressed genes following changes in expression of messenger RNA. Uh, whether one looks at one or the other of these kinds of networks, there are biological variants in sequence that exist among many of the molecular mediators of the network. 
Some of these variants have no functional consequences and others do. What message passing really does is it thinks about networks and cells as um, conduits for passing information. So even a simple process like RNA transcription is regulated by transcription factors sending information to downstream targets. And if we look at that process and model it, what we've started to discover is that the way in which those networks are constructed in normal cells and in disease cells is sometimes subtly different. That the network structure itself changes and changes in important ways. So while all the elements are there, the pieces are there, the, what distinguishes the disease state from the normal state is the pattern of connectivity between those elements. That's I'm very optimistic that using these approaches of network science and systems biology is going to lead us to substantial new insights and, and, and better treatments for disease. And I think that the recognition that the, we're not developing drugs nearly fast enough, we're not developing new insights into the biology nearly fast enough, suggests that the approaches we're using now aren't working. And I think that many of those approaches have been limited to this standard reductionist approach to disease. And using the more holistic approach of network medicine has the potential, at least, to acknowledge the complexity of complex diseases and to give new pathways to understand them. Network medicine holds great promise for our understanding uh, uh, complex phenotypes, complex diseases. Uh, I think among its promise is that it should give us the ability to define risk for disease before disease is manifest. We begin to appreciate the signatures, the network-based signatures that put a person at risk for a complex disease. It should give us insight into potential pathways within the network that could be the focus of therapeutic intervention to either prevent the disease from becoming manifest or to arrest the disease once it is manifest or better yet to reverse the disease once it's manifest. Uh, understanding this com these complex interactions among the molecular mediators of disease give us great benefit potentially with respect to prevention, diagnosis, and intervention, therapeutic intervention. What's really exciting for me doing network medicine today is the fact that we have access to unprecedented quantities of data. Uh, electronic health records are giving us more and more information that we can actually use and use in an effective way. Uh, but new genomic technologies have really opened the door to creating massive quantities of data on a scale that has really been unprecedented in biomedical research. Some of that's been driven by technology. So we're entering an era in which we're going to be very rich in the types of data we can generate, the quantities of data we can generate, the speed at which we can generate data. Our challenge is to take that data and to put it into a biological context, to take essentially what amounts to a pile of stones and assemble it into a structure that we can use to understand the processes that are driving disease. So what's so exciting for me today and where I think the future is going to be is in really coping with this massive quantity of information understanding that biomedical research is evolving into an information science and that one of the key challenges in looking at that vast quantity of information is understanding what the network properties are that are hidden within those massive quantities of data. That network medicine will not only help us understand the mechanism of disease, but it will affect all aspects of hair care you know, from the role of the environment all the way to how we actually deliver care to a particular patient. Are those good answers? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Was I talking too fast? Or... Yeah. I mean, that's that's my that's my problem. Yeah. <laughs>